five wealthy guys just vanished on a submarine while exploring the wreckage of the Titanic. This submarine sadly had a major problem with its pressure chamber, causing a tragic implosion. After an extensive search by the U.S. Coast Guard in the North Atlantic, they finally found a field of debris on the ocean floor, which turned out to be parts of the missing submarine. Now, the hopes of these Titanic enthusiasts have faded, and everyone is wondering what went wrong. Welcome to Bizarre Cases. I'm Jerry, and in today's video, we'll be looking into the entire event of the missing submarine. What led to the situation surrounding the incident? Who were the wealthy people in the sub? And what are the facts that have been established so far? Guys, stick with me and let's dive straight into it. It all began with the remarkable submersible named Titan, owned by Ocean Gate Expeditions, as it embarked on a daring dive to the legendary Titanic wreckage site. After submerging on a Sunday morning with a crew aboard the Polar Prince research ship, the sub unexpectedly lost contact just over an hour and 45 minutes later, leaving the Coast Guards puzzled and worried. As the day turned into an unsettling Sunday night, Mariners received a distressing message about the missing 21-foot submarine with a distinct white hull. They were informed of its overdue status and given its last known location, urging nearby vessels to stay alert and offer assistance if possible. Suspense filled the air, heightening the tension. The sub vanished in the treacherous North Atlantic, approximately 900 miles east of Cape Cod. The depths in this challenging area reached a staggering 13,000 feet, equivalent to the depth of the Titanic wreck. Uncertainty shrouded the fate of the sub in these harsh waters. Recognizing the dwindling air supply on board, international agencies formed a unified command, intensifying their search and rescue efforts. Within the ill-fated sub were five brave individuals, including Stockton Rush, the CEO of Ocean Gate Expeditions, and the sub's operator. The remaining four were mission specialists who had invested up to $250,000 to join this extraordinary expedition. For days, their fate remained unknown, enveloped in mystery. Finally, a breakthrough emerged when debris was discovered. This critical find unveiled a crucial piece of the puzzle. A U.S. Navy official disclosed a startling revelation. An acoustic anomaly, consistent with an implosion, had been detected shortly after the sub lost contact. Experts explained that the extreme pressure at those ocean depths would have caused an implosion so powerful that the vessel would have been destroyed almost instantaneously. So, who were the passengers aboard the sub? Well, the confirmed individuals aboard the submersible were Hamish Harding, a 59-year-old British billionaire, an explorer, Shahzada Dawood, a British-Pakistani businessman, along with his son Suleiman, Paul-Henri Narjolet, a French explorer with extensive experience exploring the Titanic, and Stockton Rush, the CEO of Ocean Gate Expeditions, who served as the pilot. A statement from Ocean Gate spokesperson Andrew Von Karens expressed condolences to the families of the Titan crew and acknowledged that all five individuals aboard the submersible were believed to be deceased. Following the Coast Guard's confirmation of the sub's likely implosion, communication was established with the Consulates General in the UK and France, according to Mauger. The Daywood family, known for their prominent business conglomerate, Dawood Group, based in Pakistan, issued a statement confirming the participation of their family members in the expedition. Additionally, Narjale is a renowned French explorer and former diver for the French Navy, who had been part of the first expedition to visit the Titanic wreck in 1987 and had returned for another dive aboard the Titan submersible. Search and rescue efforts. Early on Thursday morning, June 22nd, authorities reported that a Canadian vessel called Horizon Arctic had deployed a remotely operated underwater vehicle, ROV, that reached the sea floor. The ROV successfully located what was initially described as a debris field on the ocean floor, containing identifiable pieces of the sub. This confirmation came later in the afternoon, according to authorities. During a news briefing, Mauger stated, the ROV from the vessel Horizon Arctic discovered the tail cone of the Titan submersible approximately 1,600 feet away from the front of the Titanic on the seafloor. Subsequently, the ROV found more debris. After consulting with experts from the Unified Command, it was determined that the debris is consistent with a catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. 
Mauger also mentioned that the families were immediately notified of this sad discovery. He further explained that authorities are still working on establishing the timeline of the incident and response. He highlighted the incredibly complex operating environment of the sea floor, located over two miles beneath the surface. During the news conference, undersea expert Paul Hankins from the U.S. Navy shared that crews discovered five major pieces of debris that confirmed it was from the Titan sub. Initially, the nose cone, located outside the pressure hull, was found. Subsequently, a large debris field was discovered, and within it, the front end bell of the pressure hull. This finding was the first indication of a catastrophic event. Shortly after, a second smaller debris field was found, and Hankins explained that this debris accounted for the entire pressure vessel. He stated, The debris field confirms a catastrophic implosion of the vessel. The team will continue to map the area of the debris field. When asked about the prospects of recovering the passengers, Mauger responded, The seafloor is an incredibly harsh environment, and the debris indicates a catastrophic implosion of the vessel. We will continue working and searching the area, but I cannot provide an answer regarding prospects at this time. The discovery of the Titan debris followed several days of extensive search efforts by multiple U.S. and Canadian agencies across thousands of square miles of open ocean. On Wednesday, three additional vessels joined the search, including one equipped with side-scan sonar to create images of large sections of the seafloor. The Coast Guard confirmed that this vessel, along with others, began conducting search patterns. Multiple military and other agencies collaborated under a unified command. Frederick, a representative involved in the search, mentioned that five surface assets were already engaged, and an additional five were expected to join within the next 24 to 48 hours. Two ROVs were actively involved in the search, with more scheduled to arrive on Thursday. The Coast Guard employed C-130 aircraft for search efforts, while the Rescue Coordination Center Halifax assisted with a P-8 Poseidon aircraft capable of underwater detection. Canadian P-3S were also involved, deploying sonar buoys. In the early hours of Wednesday, officials announced that underwater noises had been detected in the search area, prompting the relocation of underwater search operations. However, the source of the noises remained unknown. The Coast Guard reported multiple detections of these sounds on Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. Frederick clarified, Regarding the noises specifically, we don't know what they are, to be honest. The P-3 detected the noises, which is why they're conducting the search and deploying sonar buoys. The news about the missing submersible and the rescue mission first emerged on Monday morning. Lieutenant Jordan Hart from the Coast Guard in Boston informed CBS News that their team was leading the rescue effort focusing on the waters off Newfoundland in eastern Canada. The Boston Regional Coordination Center took charge of the rescue operation since the location of the Titanic shipwreck falls under their jurisdiction on the east coast of North America. The search area expanded to approximately twice the size of Connecticut, covering both the surface and depths of up to 2.5 miles. Frederick emphasized the complexity of the circumstances faced by the search and rescue teams. After the debris from the submersible was found on the sea floor, a U.S. Navy source stated that the implosion of the sub would not align with the banging noises heard at intervals of 30 minutes. The official clarified that those noises were determined to have come from other ships in the area. Carl Hartsfield, an expert in underwater acoustics and director of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, explained that distinguishing between human sounds and nature sounds originating from beneath the surface can be challenging. Given the vast complexity of the ocean, it becomes difficult at times to identify the sources of these noises, whether they are generated by humans or natural elements. The Submarine The submersible that went missing belonged to Ocean Gate Expeditions, a company specializing in deep-sea exploration with manned submarines. They offered exclusive trips to tourists who could visit the RMS Titanic wreckage for a hefty price of $250,000 per seat. The Titanic sank over a hundred years ago, and its remains rest on the ocean floor about 400 miles southeast of the Newfoundland coast. OceanGate recently announced on its website and social media that its expedition to the shipwreck was underway. They described it as a seven-night extraordinary journey offering people a chance to escape their everyday lives and discover something truly remarkable. The company had planned two more trips for the following summer. 
Due to the sub's limited oxygen capacity, it can only remain fully submerged for a portion of the week-long voyage. However, it carries emergency oxygen and can sustain its passengers for 96 hours in case of an onboard emergency. The typical crew aboard the sub includes a pilot, three paying guests, and a content expert. The sub called the Titan weighs approximately 23,000 pounds and can reach depths of over 13,000 feet, equivalent to 4,000 meters. Regarding the diving conditions, G. Michael Harris, the founder of RMS Titanic Inc., which salvages artifacts from the Titanic wreckage, mentioned that expeditions to the Titanic are usually conducted within a three-month window between June and September. This period is chosen because the ocean waters are calmest during that time. Harris questioned why the Titan's dive took place as early as Sunday. Harris also pointed out that during his diving expeditions, he uses a transponder system, which he believed the Titan might not have had. Following the event, the U.S. Coast Guard has conveyed its heartfelt sympathies to the families and friends of the five Titan tourists. Speaking at the press conference, Rear Admiral Mulger said, On behalf of the United States Coast Guard and the entire Unified Command, I offer my deepest condolences to the families. I can only imagine what this has been like for them, and I hope that this discovery provides some solace during this difficult time. We're also incredibly grateful for the full spectrum of international assistance that's been provided. The ROVs will remain on scene and continue to gather information. Again, our most heartfelt condolences go out to the loved ones of the crew. See you in the next video. Bye!